Welcome to Money Making Conversations. I'm your host, Rashawn McDonald. It is important to understand that everybody travels a different path to success. That's because your brand is different and the challenges you face in your life will be different. So I always tell people, stop reading other people's success stories because it's time you start writing your own. Yes, their stories look great, but it's their stories. It's time for you to get your own committed effort and your own plan to be successful. My next guest is about planning. He started early in life and I call him a very good friend. We've seen each other many times. His name is Mark Mario. He's the president and CEO of the National Urban League. The National Urban League is the nation's largest historic civil rights and urban advocacy organization. Mark is a leading voice on the national stage in the battle for jobs, education, housing, and voting rights equity. With 90 National Urban League affiliates across the country serving 300 communities, they address it all, education, jobs, health, housing, and voting. And most important, civic engagement. Please welcome to Money Making Conversation, my friend, Mark Morial. Hey, Rashawn, my pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> happy New Year to you and uh, happy Kwanzaa and happy <laughs> Merry Christmas and uh, all that good stuff. And I know I'm coming at you late and uh, a little bit early. Happy King Day. I appreciate it because it's coming. And I uh, guess we and we about to uh, our president, vice president elect about to change the world in this month. Tell me about their feelings. Yeah, and on that. Uh, you know, today I was on a on a call with members of the president elect's team mm -hmm. talking about COVID, talking about racial justice, and also mm -hmm. talking about this insurrection mm -hmm. uh, that just took place at the Capitol. So these right. are very demanding, tough, and difficult times. But uh, I think uh, there's great anticipation. Mm -hmm. uh, for the coming of the Biden administration uh, mm -hmm. and the exiting of the Trump administration. But what we've seen over the last week uh, is, is nothing short of uh, distressing, repulsive, obnoxious, right. and criminal. Yes. Now, when you say all these things, let's let's go back a little bit. When uh, President Obama won his first term, he had control of the House and the Senate but he still was blocked. Right now, Biden has control of the House and the Senate. With the Senate, the vote will be broken by our Vice President Kamala Harris. Do you feel he will be able to do things versus, and we know the racism stopped gonna, a lot I of the things. I think he can do things. I think he's gonna have to, number one, get off to a fast start, an right. immediate start, uh, to take advantage of the momentum and the consensus and the coalition he's built. I right. think number two, He's going to have to continue to be visible uh, and 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 talking to the people uh, about the transformation and change and his vision for the country and how the steps he takes further that vision. Uh, and then I think number three, mm -hmm. uh, he's going to have to continue to reach out to wide numbers of people uh, to engage with them. Uh, across the board. I don't think he can be a Rose Garden president. I think he's got to get out and about, even in the midst of COVID, to the right. best that he can to engage mm -hmm. with people. So I think he has a shot. Now, he's going to have to keep Democrats unified in the House and the Senate and try to pick up some Republican support, which is not easy given the times in which we live. Uh, but I think there's a great deal of anticipation. Look, Donald Trump is leaving behind a recession Right. And not to be partisan or political, he's the third Republican president in a row to leave a recession behind. Mm -hmm. He leaves job losses, deep economic pain. Mm -hmm. George Bush the second left job losses and deep economic pain and the mm -hmm. Great Recession. If you go all the way back to the 90s, George Bush the first right. left a recession uh, that Clinton had to address when he took office. Now, let's talk about what role would the National Urban League, you the president, CEO of that, what role do you play in all this? We play the role of being a legislative advocate and a policy advocate. Mm -hmm. We play the role of being an advocate for what the black community and communities of color and urban communities want and need. Uh, we also play the role in helping to mobilize the public in favor of those things we think that are good and in opposition to those things we think are bad. And we also play a crucial role. We execute policy. No one does it better. Mm -hmm. No one has a stronger track record than we do when it comes to after school program for youth, 
-hmm. when it comes to home buyer education programs for people who want to become home buyers, mm -hmm. when it comes to workforce development and helping people get jobs, or working now as we've done for the last 15 years in the small business space. We execute policy from a nonprofit civil rights platform through the network of 90 Urban League affiliates. I've got 90 of the most talented uh, individuals, men and women, uh, across the nation who run, who manage, who lead our programs and our advocacy at the national, at the national level, at the local level, I should say. So that right. is the role we are going to play. Uh, right. Today, I was in a meeting with the Biden transition team last mm -hmm. week, several meetings. A week before that, we had a meeting with the president-elect himself and Vice President-elect Harris. This is going to be an important time when we've got to move quickly, move quickly, right? move quickly. Mm -hmm. Move quickly. Now, let me ask you this, Mark. You know, we talked in May when your book, uh, Gumbo Coalition, came out. And I thought it was one of the fantastic books of 2020. And it was all about diversity. It was all Thank about you. bringing people together. And it was a five-point plan in that book. Talk about that book and what, because my whole thing is that I always tell people, a good read is a good read. A good lesson is a good lesson. That book had a plenty of great lessons in it. Talk about that book for a minute. So I just want to remind that book, people. Uh, you know, central to that book, Rashawn, is the idea when a new administration starts, they've got to have a solid plan and get off on a good foot and get off mm -hmm. on a fast foot. And mm -hmm. nothing's more important at the very beginning when a new administration's popularity, their support, uh, their, uh, their credibility is usually the highest at the very beginning. That book also talks about what you do in the face of emergencies. The mm -hmm. insurrection was an emergency. And emergencies can paralyze leaders, paralyze governments, paralyze businesses. How you have to respond to the emergency. You right. have to put the interests of people and their safety at the front of an emergency. And so you can't be paralyzed. So we tell these lessons uh, and we tell the lessons of, of, of working together and collaboration and unity. In this environment, for mm -hmm. us to work together as a nation, in these times, we must cut out the cancer of racism. Mm -hmm. If we can't get beyond racism and hate, building strong coalitions is going to ever be more difficult. Did Donald Trump do anything good during his four years as a president? Uh, look. The First Step Act, which was a modest, if you will, but important step that positively impacted several thousand people, mm -hmm. uh, is something that Donald Trump signed uh, through Jared Kushner's support. It wasn't perfect. It didn't go far enough. Uh, but it did take a step in the right direction. Right. Uh, Donald Trump took more credit for that than he deserved. Yeah. Because that was original bill was a bill of Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, mm -hmm. a bill that Congressman Cedric Richmond supported, mm -hmm. a bill that uh, 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 many, many others in the Congress had pushed for years. Donald mm -hmm. Trump kind of jumped on board late. And yeah, his support helped push it over the finish line. So I would single that out as one piece of legislation. But everything else he did, his rhetoric, his tone, his lack of diversity in his appointments, this insurrection, uh, his racial rhetoric, sort of take away his legacy. His legacy is damaged. His legacy is spoiled. I don't see how I can draw any other conclusion except that he's the worst president in modern American history. And that's, that's sad because the fact that... Um he played on everybody's uh, weaknesses. He played on fear. He was a bully. Uh, he's used social media as that bully. Being that I'm based in Georgia, I got to see it firsthand. I got to see what he did with the Secretary of State Rassenberger, the governor, uh, Gabrielle Sterling. And then you saw out of that a Phoenix Rose, Stacey Abrams. Tell us about your, your Look, thoughts Stacey on Stacey Abrams she accomplished. and Royford, Raphael Warnock and Keisha Lance Bottoms and uh, Hank Johnson, and I could continue to name leaders in, uh, in Georgia. Uh, the great ambassador, Andrew Young, is a moral voice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, ro Georgia rose in the spirit of Martin Luther King, in the spirit mm -hmm. of Maynard Jackson, in the spirit <laughs> of Andy Young. That coalition 
came together for Ossoff, for Warnock, and for Biden. It was a powerful thing. And it's uh, uh, it will always be remembered because it tipped the balance. Yes, it did. The gentle balance and gave power to the Democrats at a time when doing it is so important to the future of the country. Should we be? Should we feel good now? Should we feel there is a a, a voice in the White House that would listen? I think we should feel that there's now an opportunity to be optimistic. Yes. And I say an opportunity to be optimistic because amidst all this pain, amidst all these potential foreclosures and evictions, amidst the threats of violence that are being, uh, if you will, communicated on the Internet, uh, I can't celebrate. I can't spike the ball. I can't pop any champagne. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's not time for a traditional celebration. It is time. It is time uh, for us to cast our eyes on the future and begin to work and keep our sleeves rolled up and continue, continue to plow, continue to wreck, to continue to row, continue to work. You know, you crossed that stage as a mayor in the city of New Orleans at a very early age, Mark, and just to see the journey and uh, many times you came on the Steve Harvey Morning Show talking and having passion. What I like, what I love about you is that you've seen change and you created change. Talk about that early journey when you first had an oh. official voice as a mayor. Tonight. Well, I got elected amidst a crisis in my own city. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost 500 murders a year, uh, a broken economy, no program for youth, and and it was uh, I was motivated by cause, the cause to fix and change and revive a place that I loved and cherished, my beloved hometown of New Orleans. And, uh, you know, we built a team Mm -hmm. of young people, old people, black people, white people, Mm -hmm. Hispanics and Asians. We built a team of people (laughs) and just got down to being about the business. Politics was not a beginning nor an end. Mm -hmm. Politics was simply a means to make change in the lives of people. So I had that incredible opportunity as a man in my mid-30s to lead uh, New Orleans and certainly a tremendous opportunity now for the last 17 years to lead this historic civil rights organization. Well, I hope you understand why I got you on this call. Listen to what you said when you came in 36 years of age, New Orleans, civil unrest, murders, economy was out of control. There was no direction. I said, um, I told my staff, I said, I got to talk to Mark. I said, because he's the king of the gumbo coalition. He's a campaign of understanding that people need to work together to to win together. And when I when I talk about when we see basically when I look at the Biden ticket, it's a gumbo coalition. You have Biden. Biden has put together, Sean, Biden's put together a a gumbo. Lloyd Austin, Marsha Mm -hmm. Fudge, uh, Javier Becerra, uh, Pete (laughs) Buttigieg. I mean, he's, uh, you know, he's put together a a, a ticket uh, that is as. (laughs) varied and diverse as any or rather Mm -hmm. administration Mm -hmm. uh, so far that is varied as diverse as any in American history. Well, we know, I want to talk about the, the empowering communities and changing lives, the five-point empowerment agenda that you have out there. Because my whole thing about the National Urban League is that there's a plan there. When you got there, there wasn't a plan. In your book, you talk about that. And, we you have know, from- focus. We focus mm-hmm. on five areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, we focus on five areas and we focus on programs, policy, and mm-hmm. thought leadership. Mm-hmm. And we're very focused on the areas that we focus on. We focus on education. Right. We focus on jobs. We focus on housing, health. Uh, we focus on uh, justice issues. And when we focus on those issues, every organization needs a focus. You can't be an ambulance chaser. Now, sometimes you got to be the ambulance. Right. But you can't chase ambulances and civil rights and be effective. You got to respond to crises. But you got to have a solid, proactive plan. And that's what the National Urban League does. That's why we serve uh, almost 2 million people a year. That's why we've got this dynamic network of 90 affiliates across the nation with talented men and women doing the important work of the Urban League movement. That's why uh, we have uh, 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 sustained ourselves and survived now 
for 110 years. Well, well, Mark, I know I didn't, I can't keep you long. I wanted to I least... appreciate you, Rashawn. Let's do it again. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your leadership, appreciate your voice, appreciate your friendship, and appreciate the chance to be on uh, uh, with you for another conversation. Once again, Gumbo Coalition, you can buy it at a uh, uh, bookstore near you or online. God bless you, Rashawn. All right, then. Thank you for coming on Money Making Conversations. If you want to hear more Money Making Conversations interview, please go to moneymakingconversation.com. I'm your host, Rashawn McDonald.